Welcome to the second hour of World Crisis Radio Webster Tarp here in Washington, D.C. Uh, let me hasten to add, uh, concerning that uh, course, the political economy of the American system, that will be held here in Washington, D.C. sometime in the middle of January, hoping for MLK weekend, uh, but we'll uh, let you know as soon as we have anything specific we we're trying to uh, line up the logistics so stay tuned stay tuned to this broadcast stay tuned to my twitter feed and we will post the notice on toply.net but now we uh the the attention of the world is on michigan uh detroit in, in particular because uh the end of the uh, what can we say the so-called alleged end of the bankruptcy process in reality this snyder upton and or clique has been carrying out this killer austerity. The pensions in Detroit have been looted. Uh, tremendous austerity has been imposed. And when we look to the other side of uh, Michigan, the western face, uh, we find this same political machine in crisis. Right? We've got uh, Bob Woolley, the county commissioner there in St. Joseph uh, near Benton Harbor. He's He's been jailed for embezzlement he'll have to stand trial for stealing money from an uh, an old uh, senior center an old folks home uh sheriff paul bailey uh narrowly escaped jail unfortunately he did escape it but he had a close call and uh well we want to hear from the person at the center of all this and that's uh, reverend edward pinckney who is uh, facing now his sentencing hearing this coming Monday. Welcome, Reverend. Tell us the situation. Webster, thank you so much, but I have breaking, breaking news. Listen Go ahead. to this. The, here's what happened. The, right now, the judge and the prosecutor are working together because we dropped a bomb on them on yesterday. The, one of the jurors, was personal friends, not only with the clerk, but she also knew the prosecutor. Whoa. Number two, which is we asked her, they, there was a, a witness list, and we asked her specifically, did she know anybody on that list? She said nothing. We asked her three times. Then we asked her specifically, did she know Sharon Tyler? And, uh, and she was numb. She didn't say a mumbling word. Then, here's the question. We asked him, did she have any connection to Sharon Kyle? She said no. We found them on Facebook as friends. Also, huh. we found them for the, uh, uh, this girl, uh, Gail Freeland, is also the chairperson for FLAG, for the FLAG parade that they have every single year. They had it for 10 years. And Sharon Tyler has been in that parade. And she's been there, so she's saying that there is no connection. She's out of her mind. Number three, when they was the beauty, when they had the beauty pageant, Sharon Tyler was asked to come on the stage by Gail Freeland. It gets even better. <laughs> the sheriff and the undersheriff are both on the board of the Blossom Town. And then we find out that the sheriff's daughter and the juror is Facebook's friend. And it gets even better. They all working together. During the parade, they have 15 to 20 different uh, uh, floats the police department has in this parade. We asked them specifically, do you have any connection with the police department? Any at all? Do you know any of them? She didn't say a mumbling word. So now the judge and the prosecutor are trying to figure out how they try to get. She just, she lied so she can be on the jury so she can help her friend Sharon Tyler convict me. And she had two friends on that juror. One named Alan Paskinski, and I think the other lady was small, but we, we also doing an investigation of four other jurors who we believe was planted on that jury by Barron County. So we are in the midst of 
I, we don't know how they're going to handle it, but they trying right now as we talk right now. That courthouse is in an uproar because they could not yeah. believe it's a possibility that Reverend Edward Pini will wiggle out of this mess. We, not only are we demanding a new trial, we demanded they drop all charges because they knew it. They knew what they was doing. So I'm, I'm, I'm really excited, Webster. I, this is, a matter of fact, News 57 is at my house right now. Ready to ready to interview me. Every everybody now that heard about it across the, the state, and and everybody's excited. And believe me, we are in an uproar. I, I all right, nothing, nothing, Reverend. Nothing, let, nothing. Let's just we can go through this a little bit. Uh, you're saying that this was perjury by Gail Freeland when she was questioned. During, I guess they call it the voir dire, right? Voir dire, went to get on the jury, right? Absolutely. So she was asked uh, these questions about, do you have personal connections to these people on the prosecution side? And she or, lied or repeatedly. Side. Either side. It didn't make no difference which side it was on. But right. she didn't say a mumbling word. What she did was she knew what she was doing. And also, we found out that she might be friends with Michael Sepik, too. We, we, we're still doing an investigation. We're still trying to find out more on two other jurors, uh, Jill Olson and a guy named Scott Rose. We, we, uh, uh, we know that they know something about the uh, uh, law enforcement, that we know that much about them. But we don't have all the evidence to support like we got. We got about 25 sheets on Gail uh, Freeland uh, information. And it's important that we expose them for what they really are. I don't know what they might try to do on money, but right now, uh, the, a word at the courthouse that they're scrambling, trying to figure out how they're going to around this. So I, I'm excited, Webster. That is I'm, a blockbuster news. Uh, yeah, that essentially, this is, this the idea news. being that there was jury tampering, jury packing, that mm -hmm. the jury was suborned, uh, all highly illegal. Absolutely, and, 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 and they knew better, they, and they knew it all the time. It wasn't a surprise to them. It was, it was the surprise that we found out about it. So we are on top of it. Also, we filed a motion for a direct verdict once again because there was absolutely no evidence that could have convicted me of this crime. A directed, a directed verdict of not guilty. That's right. So we, we, we're doing the things that need to be done. I, I wouldn't be surprised if they tried to, you know, if, if they still tried to sentence me on money. I wouldn't be shocked about it. But, you know, uh, but I know how they operate. You see what I'm saying? Right now, we got them just where we want them. But now, and so I'm, we're I'm saying happy that. happy to be that, in this uh, position, Webster. Gail Freeland is the personal friend of the prosecutor, Mike Sepik. Is that no, it? We don't, we don't, we don't know that much yet. We know that she, she's a friend of, uh, Sharon Tyler. That's what we do know. Okay. Yeah, we do know that, and that's enough to get us a new trial. Okay. Uh, Reverend, do we have a, uh, a press release that has all of this spelled out? You will get one before the night's over with. Okay. Also, I'm, I'm going to send you the brief also, Webster, so you can put it on your Great. website so you know everything that I know. Great. I'll also, I would like to put it on Twitter so people listening to the broadcast uh, Reverend uh, Pinckney had to go through that relatively quickly. If you want to see all of that laid out in writing, go to uh, Webster G. Topley Twitter feed and then indeed to, uh, to Topley.net uh, as you listen to this broadcast on Saturday, the 13th of, uh, of December. That is a blockbuster. And uh, I guess you've got all these, the, these other names of people who were on the uh, jury, the Jill Olsons, yeah, Scott the Jill Rose, Olson, Scott, and others. Scott Rose. They had uh, Alan Paskinski, who, who's also from the same area that Gail Freeland is from. Who she, but she admitted she knew him from the parade. But she okay, hang on, Leverick. We're going we're gonna to carry over into the next segment, at least briefly. Back in a minute on World Crisis Radio. Welcome back to World Crisis Radio. Webster Tarpley in Washington. Um, you have a few more minutes with Reverend Pinckney now. He's just told us this uh, blockbuster news uh, that uh, the jury, which uh, convicted him of uh, forgery for attempting to organize a recall election for the uh, the Whirlpool-controlled 
uh, mayor of Benton Harbor, Michigan, that jury has been extensively tampered with, uh, and it also includes suborning and uh, perjury by jurors doing, during the voir dire, during the questioning about the selection of the jury, uh, that a lot of them were essentially uh, guilty of perjury. Uh, and that's going to come out then on Monday, uh, the 15th of December in the, uh, in the, in the sentencing, uh, or not as we would hope, right? That there would be a, a, ver- a directed verdict of not guilty. The whole thing would be overturned and there'd be no sentencing. Reverend, just, just repeat now for people how they can, uh, be a part of this, how they can, uh, how they can help you. Those of you, and, and we do need finances to get this thing going. I would love for about five people to send me $500, and they can go to bhbanko.org. That's bhbanko.org. We really, really need your support. Or you can mail a check to Banco, B-A-N-C-O, 1940 Union Avenue, Benton Harbor, Michigan, 49022. Or you can call me at home at 269 925 Zero 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 one. This is some very very exciting news. We know what they're going to be trying to do. They're going to be up all week trying to stop us. But I understand <laughs> that what they're trying to do. And uh, just uh, is there anything to add to uh, to Bob Woolley? Is he still in jail? Did he get out on bail? Well, no, he he had a hearing this morning, and now, like I told you before, it's going to be about a million dollars when it's over with. Uh, they said 150 earlier. Now it's up to 300,000. It's going to be close to a million dollars for sure. That he embezzled from the that senior center. That he embezzled, center. and they're trying to cover up for him. Matter of fact, Mike Sepik, the prosecutor, is a personal friend of this guy. He's a and Sheriff Bailey. They're all friends. They're always at that meeting when they gave Paul Bailey that standing ovation when he told them that they had convicted nice. him. Wow. And you're, you've got a number of affidavits about that, too. The Absolutely. Republican uh, reference pe- to that. pep rally about uh, We Got Pinckney. And then Sheriff Paul Bailey uh, was almost jailed for contempt of he court, was correct? He almost jailed, but unfortunately he wiggled out of it. Uh, Barron County politics, that's what I call it. Okay. All well, right. then. And, and let's. Uh, Please encourage people to donate because I really, really need it. And even if I do lose, I'm going to have to get this appeal. And I gotta have resources. I can't fight without resources. Absolutely. So uh, that's that's what everybody should do. And uh, again, it's bhbanco.org, and uh, that's the quickest way to send a contribution. Right? You've got a PayPal on there. Yes. All right, Reverend. All right, We're going to be so in much. touch with you soon, and uh, good luck on Monday. You've got hey, plenty yeah. of uh, we, we, we ammunition. We're going to do everything we can get. We're putting it in the hands of the Lord. Let him deal with these demons. Okay. Good for you, Reverend. Keep fighting always, as I'm sure you will. All right, then. All right. So thank, thanks to Reverend Pinckney. And now, uh, not really changing the theme, we're just going to get a, um, a a picture of some of the mobilization uh, in particular by people from the United Front Against Austerity and the Tax Wall Street Party who have been uh, a bubble attempting to get letters sent to the judge in all this, Judge Schrock, uh, in this, the judge in the case. Um, and that's actually not too late. There's still probably a chance to send something in if you haven't done so and you've got, you've got time now. But let's get the overview. Let's get Daniela Walls, the chairwoman of the Tax Wall Street Party. Welcome, Daniela. Hi, thanks for having me. I'm here at the Tax Wall Street Party. And the Tax Wall Street Party and the UFAA have been mobilizing. This week's examples are too many, but I'm going to try to hit some highlights of what we've done for Reverend Pinckney. There's some watershed moments this week. I'm sure that Pinckney already went into some detail, but I didn't get to hear you guys. So if you could please correct me if any of my figures are off or facts, because there's so much intensity and speed that these numbers keep changing, and these city officials are falling like dominoes, and I can't keep track. So there's details in all these cases that change moment by moment. So correct me, but 
we're re- we've really stirred the pot on this. We're really starting to get the... Now there is national and international attention on this. Our 25 locals in states and our continuous presence at the Ferguson protest, um, they are seriously using this time to help Pinkney while also making lasting alliances with civil rights organizations in their areas. The locals have carved out time for themselves to give presentations that outline demands with flyers that read, what do we want? This includes summer jobs for black youth in their states, a $15 minimum wage, better community schools, 30 million jobs financed by the Fed, 0% student loans, and that has all gotten a great reception, and the leaders want to incorporate these demands into the Martin Luther King marches. In San Antonio, that's one of the largest. There's going to be 100,000 people at the Martin Luther King March. So they're carving out a space where we can hold up flyers with these demands. In Benton Harbor, the white officials, and I, like I said, I hope I'm not going over what you guys have already talked about. Correct me if I'm wrong. But the white officials responsible for arresting Pinckney are now being arrested. And the county commissioner, Bob Woldley, is, was he sent to jail? Did you find out? Is he in jail? He, he, he spent a couple of nights in jail, but... Um... He's he's now facing charges. the The amount embezzled is up to three hundred thousand. You just go ahead though. Oh, okay. And yeah, Bailey Bailey essentially got million. off. No jail time for Bailey. Well, yeah, the judge is being soft, right? So the, this the county commissioner uh, Woolley or Wobley, I don't know how to pronounce his name. Woolley from this Upton machine. Yeah, it's from this Upton machine, and he was caught embezzling. And then, like we said, nobody knows the exact amount. But between the tax Wall Street party and Reverend Banco, in this white racist company town when i've been dealing with the people in this town and you've never seen anything like it it it's not a good description of america but we are we are sending between banco and the tax wall street we are sending corrupt white officials to jail in a company town and this is almost unheard of in the world of activist politics recently at least proving that we are an elite group of activists this is not the usual world of moveon.org where they tell you to sign a petition uh, or those types of similar things. We've proved that now we can now penetrate the most corrupt company town and we get results. And as you say, Webster, we are not a group of Aristotelian hacks. We are leaders. So, oh, is that the music on me, Webster? Hang on, hang on. We, we'll carry you over. Uh, we'll give you a few more minutes in the next segment. We'll be back on World Crisis Radio. Welcome back to World Crisis Radio. Uh, let's continue to get uh, more of this report from... Daniela Walls, the chairwoman of the Tax Wall Street Party. Daniela, we, we give you about four or five minutes uh, more to uh, to continue the picture on the mobilization worldwide in favor of Pinckney. Okay, so uh, officials that were responsible for Pinckney's arrest over the recall petitions are now being found out not only to be corrupt but criminal. The uh, sheriff didn't get any jail time, but we're, look- we're not looking. We're fighting the war, as Pinckney said, not the battle. So we didn't, we didn't get his 90 days, but that doesn't mean that in legal terms, in legal terms, this means that this is not speculation anymore. This is now in the court, and, the, and Judge Chirac had, uh, was forced to bring these people in for sentencing, so it's on the public record. Um, unlike Pinckney, like he was soft on the sheriff, I think, we said. So the sheriff uh, who arrested Pinckney was arrested for contempt of court, specifically for an incident where he exclaims at a public gathering, we got Pinckney. This incident points to a very key aspect in the case, that, which proves that Pinckney is a victim of and being sentenced in what the lawyers are calling a lynch mob atmosphere. Sheriff Bailey got up at a Republican town hall meeting several weeks ago and exclaimed, we got Pinckney. There was a standing ovation right. from an all-white Republican crowd, and it was a standing ovation. So this looked and felt witnesses to be no less than a lynch mob. This sheriff is, has now proved that he was not a neutral public servant, which is what Pinkney has been trying to tell us all along, but now we have proof. It's in the court. This exclamation from the sheriff and the ensuing standing ovation is no longer here today, but it's public record. So Pinkney uh, and a few activists have started with them signing affidavits. Maybe we can skip through this because I think Pinkney might have covered this stuff with you. I was going, I was going to cover it, but just the, we what we need to wrap up is what's what's. Mm-hmm. How about the letters? How many letters? Right. How many from overseas? How many from big Okay, wigs? let's start with that. So I. We've, we've got letters from 10 countries and 25 states that are coming in. If you are in a foreign country, Great. this does not mean you can't write a letter. If you are in a state, now there's a couple days left. What you can do is you can fax them. I found the fax number at 269. This is the Berrien, I'll repeat it. This is the Berrien County Judge Chirac's fax number. So you put at the top, attention Judge Chirac, 
The fax number is 269-982-8643. 269-982-8643. And when you fax your letter, of course, the same as before when you wrote the letter, Pinkney needs a copy. Pinkney has a fax machine at his house. So what you need to do is call his home number, 269, I think we all know it by now, 925-0001. Call him and say, Pinkney, I'm about to send a fax. He'll convert his phone and you can send your faxes through. Try to, if you have multiple letters, do them all at once because, you know, you know, he doesn't have much time and he's a busy man. So Great. if you are in a foreign country, there is no reason you cannot fax a letter. It is just as good as a, as a hard copy at this point. So um, Chris Reese uh, at our New York local got a Reuters article syndicated this week that appeared in countless online uh, news, you know, um, magazine. You know, they have a uh, website for their news. It's a worldwide CBS, news service, USA. one of the probably right. the biggest in the world. Right. So CBS, CBN, ABS, USA. So this quote where he talks, he talks about systemic racism and he wrote, if he, he says, they quote him saying, if people are worried about the criminal justice system and racial issues, Reverend Pinckney is the perfect case. So that's bringing a lot of tension. Thank you, Chris Reese. And there's just so much going on, Webster. I could go on and on. Let's cut it there. I think we had WPFW radio here in Washington, D.C. this morning. Pinckney did that this, this morning. Yeah, I haven't had a chance to hear it. And the activists on the ground are reporting that the black community... There's, there's a change, Webster. The black community sees Reverend Pinckney as the real deal. They're saying to our activists that Al Sharpton and his ilk are fakers. They're sick of them. They're looking for something better than phony leadership. They're look, it, the guys, those guys like Sharpton have, have led them off cliffs long enough. And I think that we're beginning to see something different on the ground than we saw in Occupy and other race mobilizations where people are really just saying we want long-term solutions. We want to, stop these quixotic battles and, and you know, uh, specific battles. We want to fight the war. And most importantly, uh, now at this stage, there people are looking for solutions. And this is the change we're seeing. And this is where it's key for our activists to be there with materials ready to help lead, guide, and be sympathetic to what's happening and also address systemic racism as well as economics. But we are there for both. And it's an important time for us to be there because across the board, in uh, white struggles, too, we're all sick of no solutions. And people are looking for a way to all mobilize behind something we can get together get together on. So uh, the activists are mobilizing to attend the December 15th trial for Pinckney and the rally. We're going to have a rally on the 15th and 16th. I don't know if Pinckney told you how to get The rally there. where? There's going to be a rally in front of the courthouse in downtown on the 15th. I will post the exact address on uh, freepinkney.wordpress.com, all of our Facebook pages, and all of our websites, Against Austerity, TaxWallStreetParty.org. Or you, or you can call Reverend Pinkney. His phone's always on, 269-925-0001. Give him a call and say, how do I get to the rallies? There's buses. Yeah. There's, a whole, there's, a, there's a whole mobilization we're trying to figure out right now from Chicago and from surrounding areas. And um, I, that's where do you do you want me to keep going. I mean, I can keep going. Oh, I think that's I think that's a pretty good overview. All right, thank okay, you, Daniela okay. Walls, the chairwoman Webster. of the Tax Wall Street Party, leading thank this you, uh, mobilization. Okay, gonna get back to work. Give Pinkney a call right now. Okay, talk okay, to you. Bye bye. See you again see you next, next week. week. Okay, bye bye. Thanks. To get the uh, to get the the uh, post hoc summary. Okay.